Hey, Deserving Listeners, today's episode is going to be a deep dive on interpersonal therapy. And this episode is going to be for patrons only. So if you want to listen to this, you have to become a patron of the podcast on patreon.com. So for years now, I've been calling myself an interpersonal therapist. I mean, really, when people ask me what theory I use, I'll say, well, I I integrate several theories. You know, I, I integrate many, many theories, actually. I love theory, and I find that most, if not all, theories have value. And I find that each of them addresses a different corner of psychology and psychotherapy, and so I I like to integrate and blend all of them depending on the situation. But when pressed, if someone said, okay, well, if you had to pick one, what would it be? For the past, I don't know, number of years, I've been saying interpersonal. And thus, I've been wanting to work on this deep dive for a long time. I have been working on this deep dive for years, actually. I mean, I've been working on it more in earnest over the past, you know, three or four months or something. But I've been wanting to do this episode for a long time. So I decided to sit down a few months ago and really start researching all the different histories and the literature and the research and all the different contributors to interpersonal therapy. And as I was working on my notes, I started realizing, wait, I don't know if, am I really an interpersonal therapist? (laughs) Maybe I didn't understand interpersonal therapy the way that it really is. And it started to frustrate me because I thought, have I been calling myself something that isn't true this whole time? Have I been advertising myself as something that's false or simplistic or something. And I found that the word interpersonal in the field of psychotherapy gets used in a lot of different ways. And at a certain point, I started to get really discouraged as I was working on this deep dive. I started thinking, how do I talk about something that I'm not that into, but I'm supposed to act like I'm that into? And then I started looking into it further. And I started realizing that actually there's a pretty a deep number of rabbit holes in interpersonal therapy that are really different than the way that I thought of interpersonal therapy. You know, I thought when I was researching this episode, I, I'd have a really easy time because I'm like, well, this is right up my alley. This is what I've been calling myself. I feel like I understand the basic tenets. But as I was looking into all the different rabbit holes, I thought, oh, wow, there's there's some weird rabbit holes in interpersonal therapy. And then I got discouraged with that too. I thought, do I really want to go down those rabbit Because I don't find those rabbit holes to be very interesting. I'm, I'm sure they're great for some people, but not for me. And I really hit a wall about a week ago. And, and then I, 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 just, I just threw my hands up and walked away from my notes thinking, and I've been here before. I've been doing this podcast for 13 years and I've been writing in academia for you know 25 years. And there's always that time where you're just like, I don't think I can work on this paper. I don't think I can work on this dissertation anymore. It's, it doesn't make any sense. And I, I feel like I'm running into some writer's block or I've, I've wasted my time going down this road. What if I, I should have done something different from the beginning? So I put it down uh, knowing that I would wake up the next morning and, and approach it again. And then all of a sudden, it, the next day I woke up and all of a sudden it, it clicked to me that... I'm actually not really an interpersonal therapist and I just need to accept that, or at least the label of interpersonal isn't exactly accurate given what I now understand to be the larger field of interpersonal therapy. Uh, The thing I should be actually calling myself, and this shouldn't be of any surprise to those who who listen to the podcast for a long time, is I I should call myself an attachment-based therapist or a psychodynamic systemic attachment-based therapist, or a psychodynamic systemic humanistic feminist collaborative attachment-based therapist. But really, if I was to choose one, I would say deep attachment-based therapist. Because sometimes when you hear attachment-based therapist, you think, oh, someone who works with three-year-olds or something. And certainly I have worked with three-year-olds, but I consider attachment to be a lifelong need. And when we have struggles with it, we will have all sorts of psychiatric symptoms, all the personality disorders. One might say that my 
conceptualization of attachment is a little bit broader than other people, but um, to me, it makes total sense. But anyway, so I have now realized in the making of this deep dive and working on these notes for the past number of months that I'm not an interpersonal therapist. I mean, I incorporate interpersonal ideas and to a broader extent, I you know, incorporate psychodynamic and attachment-based ideas. But really when I, and I think over the years, learning attachment theory has uh, made me realize that that's where I'm at home. And again, none of you should be surprised by that if you've listened for a while. That's that's what I always talk about. And I find it to be incredibly liberating and useful of a theory and broad, and there's so many different aspects to it. I now see everything through that lens pretty much when I see conspiracy theorists uh, or conspiracy-minded individuals rioting. I just think, well, when they were young, they were, you know, treated, mistreated and not attuned to. And so they developed insecure attachment, meaning that they have a, a working model of other that can't be trusted, that the world is a scary place. You know, they're two years old and they're left alone in their room to play by themselves and no one is there to notice when they're crying or some other mistreatment. And they just develop this very... A sure model of how to see the world, which is that authority can't be trusted, the world is unsafe, and then you become an adult and you retain that working model of other and of society or authority. And when you see something you don't like and someone comes along and says, you know, those those pesky authority, you know, authority figures, authority, uh, you know, power people are out to get you and can't be trusted. And it totally resonates with them because that's how they were uh, treated when they were young. It, the, the working model made sense when they were two, but at the age of 35, they're applying that model to the government or Bill Gates or something. And it, it feels right to them. And then they get involved in a lot of propaganda and they feed off each other. A lot of insecure attached individuals are feeding off each other. And so I, that's how I see this is as an example of how I see the world now. And I'm pretty sure of myself <laughs> based on the research. I, I, I feel like I really see the world now. I see people for who they are. I see us as uh, frequently reacting to our attachment threats. But anyway, interpersonal therapy definitely incorporates attachment theory for sure, especially for some individuals. Uh, in our in the interpersonal field, but it's not necessarily at the core. And the way that I think, and the the way that I, I now realize, I in terms of labels, I I should be calling myself an attachment based therapist. But anyway, so that's what I'm going to go into a deep dive today. Mainly, it's going to be going into all the different rabbit holes, or at least introducing people to that, and also going into the history of interpersonal therapy, going back to Freud, and ending with Dan Siegel today with interpersonal neurobiology. This episode is just for patrons of the podcast, so if you're not a patron of the podcast, this episode is going to end before the the good stuff begins. So if you want to listen to this, go to patreon.com, become a patron of the podcast. Do so now. Join us. Join one of us. Become one of the crew, one of the patrons. Do it now. 